Yo, what's up guys? My name is Brian Tran, realtor, business owner, entrepreneur, and we got a jam-packed day. It already started off pretty eventful because at 4.30 in the morning, I got robbed, but the rest of the day is gonna be amazing. We got a new business meeting. Uh, we're gonna start a new company, so we're gonna go over some of the numbers. We got to look at a three-unit building today. Uh, it's gonna be in the mission, so that's gonna be pretty cool. We got Key Toss, where we're gonna give keys to the new buyers of 5554 Street, which took me almost seven months to sell, so I'm so glad that that's gonna be finally done. And then we got a business meeting with my business consultant about an existing company to find out what that company is worth. So come along, guys, it's gonna be a hell of a day. This is actually for a new company that we're gonna be launching. Uh, I don't wanna to share too much about it yet, but it is gonna be virtual and big, right? Some of you guys may know I own a virtual assistant company. Uh, we provide white glove service and we provide basically people with uh, staff from the Philippines, which is significantly cheaper than if you were to hire somebody from the States. So this next company is gonna be somewhere along those lines, but allow it to be more open to a bigger market. No matter what, you gotta you gotta attract the talent, right? So that you're gonna need that off the bat. And then Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate your time. Thanks for your time, Brian. All right. Bye, guys. Okay, and we're off. We got another meeting. But um, side note, this morning was already off with a bang. 4.30 in the morning, somebody broke into this store. It didn't take much, but uh, not a very fun day when you already have to spend like 500 or 600 bucks just to fix the glasses. But you'll see it on the way out. But we gotta run to our next appointment. Hey, like, do you see my little, I had to find, you know, good thing we had those wood back there. Like, I was like, how do I cover this up until you guys get here? Like, uh, I was like, I'll make it work. I can't get rid of it. We just finished up the Rise and Grind, but we're gonna go look at this three unit building. Um, not on market we, The seller actually doesn't even know what he wants for it, which is always a good thing So we're gonna just roll up and we'll see if we can get you guys in take a look at it And we're gonna see if whether the price makes sense for us to buy it if it's not then we'll Find somebody to either buy it wholesale it list it You know one of those things. So we always got options. That's the, that's the good thing about being a uh, kind of well-rounded realtor. We give sellers multiple exit strategies and um, I think that's what a lot of other realtors don't do, right? They just kind of go into a property and are like, well, we can list it for X, but sometimes the sellers don't have time. Sometimes they want to be exited out a lot faster. So uh, we give them the option to, we just buy the property, you know what I mean? And we'll close quick. So let's go take a look. If anything, use your iPhone. <laughs> All right. Right. You always need somebody on the team that take notes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at Ray with his book. <laughs> Man. Hey, I'm the mailman. Hey, after a couple more deals, I'm gonna get you an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> you lose the book, you lose all the deals. You're right. I wasn't saying I was gonna get you a new iPad. I was gonna get you like a generation two. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have Wi-Fi capabilities. It just has notes. Yeah. How's it going? I'm Brian. Hi, Brian. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Sorry, guys. No worries. Your neck feeling better? I'm with Brian. Uh, I like the textures on the uh, the molding. It's nice. 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 Okay. 
One, two, then move. It takes two screens. You got, you got not one, but you got two screens. Okay. Cool. Does this still work? Uh, nah. Oh, three bad moves. You got a built bunk bed. Oh, yeah. Talking about? No, I just asked about this. Really okay, sense. up to no good. <laughs> up to no good. <laughs> to the bank we go. But let's talk about that house. Sometimes the moment like a, or another realtor gets involved and, and the price didn't really make sense from the get go, but we wanted to take a look at it anyways. Looks like he kind of did a lot of the work, but not, he didn't do a really great job. You know what I mean? Like you kind of put lipstick on a pig to know when something is a good deal, right? So if I'm looking at 10 deals a week or 10 deals a day, I will have a better sense on the market. I will have a better feel and graphs and posts than somebody who's only looking at maybe one deal a month. So that's why we're going out. And even when things don't make sense, right? Like on paper, if I have time, I'm still gonna go because you just never know. Uh, I'm trying to build the relationship, the contacts, because they may not be, I guess, reasonable today, but they may be more reasonable tomorrow, next week, next month. And that's what we're game, you know, we're aiming for. So, yeah. I hope that gives you guys some insight. And then Saturday, you're gonna show them five six properties too. Uh, no, I'm gonna show them a couple on uh, Friday, and then Sunday, I'm just gonna send them to open houses. Nice, nice, nice. I'm doing, I'm doing all the appointment homies today and uh, tomorrow. And then, uh, there's actually there's like, actually a lot, huh, for in the 2.5 million range. There's hella. Wow. And they're all long days on market too. Money, money. Everything, everything's sitting. All right, should be easy then. Negotiate, get them a good price. All right, yeah, cool. I was just hitting you up if you want to go get a salad or something. So right now, we're kind of at that pivotal point in the market where a lot of homes are starting to sit buyers are kind of there's more buyers out there but also a lot of buyers are weary um interest rates gone up significantly you know we don't know the market's kind of weird people are losing a lot of money in the stock market so it's no longer a, a seller's market now it is segmented meaning depending on where the property is how it looks and what neighborhood it's in some of those properties are still doing very well but for the i think for the general market things are starting to pivot and it is becoming a buyer's market which is good because we have a lot of buyers that are looking to enter the market and we're able to get them great deals uh we're negotiating very heavily and for the most part we're actually winning so we put like four million dollars in new contracts this week and all of them were a little bit below the last sales comp so if you're a buyer get pre-approved go out and start making offers start negotiating it's your time all you guys waiting for that deal or when the market's gonna pull back this is your time let's go out and hunt for some of our sellers you know because we we focus I focus primarily on the listing side helping the sellers prep their home and selling it you got to make sure that you're setting the right expectation and that they have to be flexible and not so set on you know what the market was doing a month ago two months ago you know it's a dynamic market meaning you have to be on top of it it changes almost now weekly because the rates are changing weekly and they're not changing by a little bit they're changing by a lot right the stock market is not changing a little bit it's moving a lot and a lot of the buyers in this market guess where they have all their money 
in the stock market. It's not liquid. Nobody has, you know, for especially here, average single family homes, 1.6, 1.7. Nobody has 20% just in the bank account. It's usually in indexes or in their Charles Schwab stock account. So when the market pulls back so drastically, they're like, screw this, I'm not gonna sell it. Like I'm down so much, I can't sell it, right? So you have to understand that as a realtor and as a seller and understand just to, you know, readjust your expectation on what you think your home's gonna sell for. So we signed listings probably six months ago and I'm going back to a lot of them saying, hey, look, your house, I don't know if we can achieve 1.35 anymore. I think the market is now saying that we're gonna probably achieve 1.2 so that they understand that that when you start putting it on the market and you start marketing it, you don't have the activity and now you're no longer getting that one three. At least you planted the seed and you, you explained to the seller what to kind of expect. A lot of realtors have a lot of issues and they do a terrible job because they don't set the right expectation. You're not communicating with your sellers. You're not telling them, you're not educating them. And when you don't educate them and you, know, you let the market kind of tell you what the property is, they get pissed because they thought their house was one three. Now all of a sudden it's one two. You didn't educate them. That's a big jump, right? So a good realtor is a good communicator and a good teacher, a good advisor. That is what a good realtor is. Um, but in the last two years, you know, if you just had a license and you, and you were willing to go out and show properties and write offers, you were you were considered a good agent. But now you really need to be in it you really need to know how to speak to your sellers to your buyers and uh, you're gonna start seeing a lot of realtors drop out because they lack that skill but not 50 hills baby here at 50 hills we live this we breathe this we've been doing this for a long time I may look young but I'm approaching almost nine years in the business I've been licensed for almost nine years and it's hard for me to believe but you know I've I haven't seen all the cycles but I loved history growing up. I researched the, the past cycles. I talked to all the OGs in the game. I learned what they did. I learned what the, you know what they saw so that I can take that experience, right? Share it with our agents at 50 Hills, but also share it with the sellers and the buyers of today's market. So let's go guys, let's go. Yeah, man, typical day. So look, we have a little gap before our one o'clock. We got about 50 minutes. Where we have to be at one o'clock is very close to Honey Bear Boba. So let's go get some boba. Let's go. So we might as well check out the inventory. Summer. Good thing about having multiple stores is some of the ingredients overlap from Honey Bear and Rise and Grind. So we have it here and then I'll move it over to Rise and Grind. I try not to do these stuff too much. Cause you gotta like delegate it out but I'm already in the neighborhood, bro. I'm not too good today, so I'm gonna do it all. Money. Three McLarens you sent me. Um, what would those lease, what, what would the lease terms look like for those cars? Uh, it's a black tent. Not in the market to really buy a car, but I'll let somebody run the numbers. You know, what, you know, what the, see if it makes sense. What the specific residuals look like, the spec, and the number of options, and that sort of thing. So I'll find that out too when I get those terms for you, okay? Yep, awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Nick. All right, I'll touch base with you here in a little bit, Brian. All right, All right thank, thank you. you. Bye. Am I buying a new car? Hell no. But I like to know what the market is doing. I like to know what numbers are today. Again, it's the same thing going back to like looking at deals, right? 
you don't know a deal unless you know what you know unless you're shopping actively looking so I'll always look at cars I'll always look at a house I'll look at anything I'll look at the numbers and if I notice that it drops significantly let's say like he comes back today and say that the lease is like I don't know three thousand a month okay and you're like okay well now at least you have a base like hey it's three thousand a month now let's say two months three months later they call me back and they say hey Brian I can get it for you for fifteen hundred well at least now I know hey it was at three thousand before and now it's at fifteen hundred a month that's a pretty good deal right so but you won't know that unless you talk you ask the right questions and you allow people to run the numbers so that you have that as a reference same thing when you're buying real estate same thing when you're buying watches it's like if you want to buy something take the time to actually do the research and don't just make a like an unrational decision to just buy something really quick because that's how you get smacked over the head with a hammer and uh have a salesperson really do you in you know what i mean but you can't do me in because i do my homework so that's another lesson we're dropping lessons today man go to school for what come watch my youtube you'll get three or four lessons minimum minimum a day <laughs>
I look forward to your email. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank Alrighty, you. bye. Bye. All right, that was probably one of the best calls. Um, you know, it was a lot. I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll probably pull up the PDF when I get that over, so we can go over it as uh, with us and the viewers. But basically, we wanted to find out where our one of our companies stood, and you know, when you exit out, certain industries get certain multipliers, right, based upon the revenue. So if it's making a million dollars a year, it's worth 2x more based upon this test called Value Builder, then you can typically sell your company for about 2 million, right? So this company right here actually scored at a 4x multiplier, which is fantastic, because uh, they put a really big valuation on our company. But also, we didn't score like as high as you could. And so, and that's exciting for me because I'm happy with the value, but the fact that we have room to grow and things to improve on now makes me excited because we can take that 4x multiplier to maybe 4.5, 5x, right? So that can really increase the value of the company. End of the day, we're not gonna sell, but it is, if you know, obviously the more valuable something is, it kind of means you're doing something right. So I feel like we're on the right track. I feel like uh, we, built something amazing and it still has room to grow so but yeah that's thursday rock and roll all right guys that's about wraps it up we're about to get some lunch and uh, i'm gonna go pick up the kids that's the end of the episode stay tuned for the next one